Hey guys, let me set you up uh, a example and of two different business models and which one you feel more comfortable with. So I am going to you know, say kudos for Alpha Investment. He made a video that was really honest that he had underestimated the demand for Ikoria Collector's Edition boxes. Um, he priced them reasonably priced and within, I think he said five minutes, $700,000 of the product moved. Uh, so we're talking about 2,400 boxes. And he did not have 2,400 boxes, so he went out. He was going to ship some commander decks. He was going to do whatever in his power to not cancel orders because it was a good deal for his customers and to deliver the products that his customers paid for. And he's successfully done that. Now, the other model is the MTG Finance model. I'll call this the Chapman model, but it did happen on MTG Prices Paid Discord. You can read about it on Wired, and it really irks me a lot because when you talk about that model, that's the model that the majority of MTG Finance is under. So you have an individual, Chapman, who has joined a paid Discord chat ch channel for $8 a month, and he's convincing these other people who joined this paid Discord channel that he has inside information. But the inside information he has from supposedly a Wizard of the Coast employee doesn't make them money, does it not? Like he openly says, and he's been openly quoted, and this is why I think Rudy is so smart for not going on the Wild article. That article has more search engine optimization juice, meaning whenever you type in somebody's name, like Jeremy's name, uh, Jeremy A's name, that's going to pop up. It'll be one of the first things that pop up. Same with Chapman and same with uh, Chillicott. Same with them all. Same with Edwin or Edward, uh, Jeremy's partner. And that would not be a way that I would, that would not be an article that helps you get employed later on in life. If you don't want to do magic, of course. So it really paints a very disturbing picture, a, a yummy picture, as Charlie Cott would say, yummy. Um, anyway, but back to my um, analysis of that business model. You convince a bunch of them via your inside unethical information, and after you're done buying the cards, that, hey, Pioneer is coming out. And people are like, oh, you know, cool, cool, let's invest. And they invest, they made a little bit of money. Some of them lost money based on the speculations. Some of them were speculating on voice of resurgence. Terrible speculation. But anyway, nonetheless. And then you hit them with your $10,000, you know, hey guys, remember me? I'm the dude who gave you that shady inside information that's totally unethical. Why don't you give me $10,000 PayPal friends and family? So there's no way if something goes wrong that I'm responsible. I know this dude. He has 96 Japanese War of the Spark boxes and you can save five bucks on them. So the price, the 10,000 divided by 96 comes out to be 105. That's not even a great deal. And I'm sure that he charged shipping on it too. Like how's that a good deal? At the time you could order because in Japan those boxes cost normal, right? It would be like in America, the boxes are the same price, and I could buy them for 110, 115 off a uh, Tokyo Taco mode because I ship large. They ship me a lot of packages EMS, so I could have bought a bunch of them. I don't know if there was a limit, but I remember thinking, ah, uh, I think it was 115 actually. I remember thinking, ah, oh, that's too high. I'm not gonna buy it. So this dude is offering a deal that's not even a great deal. And there's no way for you to get a refund back should something go wrong. And guess what? Something goes wrong. So at this point in time, Chapman, this individual, can make it right. Or, you know, MTG Price, James Chillicott can make it right too. He could say, you know what? Um, I should have never let this individual sell and promote, promote his uh, boxes to my subscriber or my um, Discord channel that's paid to be there. I needed to protect them because again, and this is all on the Wired article, which is crazy that they would even admit this stuff. Like it's crazy. It's really 
insane because if they're emitting this, imagine all the stuff that they're not emitting, right? And so at some point, the customers, which are the paid, the paid, so you can view them as patrons, the patrons who paid for their Japanese war with the spark box at slightly discounted prices, kind of like Rudy, did not receive their boxes. Now, what can, what can happen? Well, Chapman can say, you know what? That was on me, guys. Let me give you the bot. Let me give you a refund. That's decent, right? So the customer doesn't really get the value they were promised. But then Chapman could go a step further and say, you know what? That's on me, guys. And I'm going to go out and buy each 96 boxes that whatever the market rate is or whatever I can negotiate, and I'm going to send it to you. So you don't pay any more money and you still get your box exactly like I promised. That would be the reasonable business thing to do. That's what Rudy did. But what did Chapman do? Or even Chillicott could have done that, right? Chillicott could have said, you know what? I'm going to make it right because Chapman was this individual that I have been in contact with. I've called him yummy. And you know, oh, <laughs> and I like the dude, but you know, I too got tucked in and you know, let me make you whole. But that's not what happened. What happened was Chapman took a $9,000 vacation. Wow. Why don't you not go on that vacation and pay back the people that you owe money? So there's two very different business models. You look at Rudy's business model and you say, you know what? He made it right. His patrons bought something. They paid a price for something. And even though he didn't have all of those things, he went out to buy it. And again, as we know that there's a risk, right? And if you buy something, maybe it doesn't get shipped to you. Who knows? So that is the difference, I think, between a real business and how MTG Finance has been portraying itself. You know, I, I don't know of any MTG Finance deals that have gone right. This isn't the first time people have been scammed from MTG Finance. And, but this is like the most obvious, right? Give me money. Don't worry about it. You don't need to ever charge me back. There's no repercussions on my side. And just trust me, I'll buy this stuff for you. I'll be the middleman. And then I'll make my profit. So, I mean, you look at the two business models. You look at one business, Alpha Investments does everything he can to make his customers happy and make sure that they get the value they deserve. And the other business model, it doesn't even give a, issue a refund. The money's just gone. Which again, it's kind of weird. If you're going to pay $10,000 or something, like what were you paying, cash? Or like, wouldn't you have like, at that level, wouldn't you not do friends and family PayPal? Wouldn't you do eBay like what what are you doing that the money is gone and cannot be returned like if you charged a credit card right you can just do a chargeback so like did you not use a credit card or PayPal essentially what I'm suggesting is uh, people in MTG finance are really angry at Rudy all the time because they're it's the evolution of MTG Finance. Once you have something like Rudy, there should be never another time where someone gets scanned by a Chapman. Right? It, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you not buy from Rudy or another uh, YouTuber or someone like the eBay store? Why would you not buy from someone that there is a reputation? There is. I don't know. If, I know Rudy was selling War to Spark, but I don't know if he was selling Japanese things. And Japanese booster boxes, but then that's kind of like weird that like this one dude has so much of it if Rudy can't get it or Rudy doesn't want to sell it. It's kind of weird that this one random dude leaking inside information on a paid Discord channel. What I really am suggesting is somehow a bunch of MTG finance people who really enjoy the hobby enough to pay a monthly fee to for a Discord channel, which is free. Right? The Discord channel doesn't cost any money normally, but to share inside information. So these financially savvy, supposedly intelligent individuals got scammed, but no one made a big deal about it because the only time that we heard about that is now via the Wired article. A year. That was like June of last year. 
Yet these same individuals will make a huge rackets about Rudy for every little thing he does. Isn't that weird? It's so weird, right? That this whole Discord channel got scammed and no one spoke a word until it was public and wire and hundreds of thousands, if not eventually millions of people are now looking at this and laughing their asses off at how dumb these people are. They truly are the definition of MTG Finance. You couldn't make this stuff up. I couldn't even think of a better scenario than a bunch of dudes given someone who's very unethical, who's a history of being unethical in a different country. He's a citizen in Australia, living in Ireland, who took a $9,000 vacation, who's leaking inside information from like a, a Wizard Coast employee. But before he's leaking it, he's, you know, taking, he's leaking it at the very end when he's done buying and he's done making his own money. So then he can sell to the same people that he leaked the information to suddenly he collects $10,000 and there's no recourse for the person who paid the 96 people who paid. And then he gets scammed supposedly weird. No, 